Okay, the logic of the sequence. Why are we doing it now? Why didn't we do this before reading the English? Why bother reading the English? Why not just do this first? Well, look, if you have never learned to read the script directly, you'll never be able to understand the Quran when you read or listen to it, because in order to learn the Arabic language, you have to know how to read the script, right? And we, we don't want you in a situation where you, like, I consider it a transliteration a danger, because transliteration, you can actually jump ahead a few steps, so you can memorize a few surahs of the Quran without ever learning to read the Quran. And you can memorize a couple of du'as without ever learning to read the du'a. It is, in my humble opinion, way more important more important than learning the surah, more important than learning the du'a, is to learn the script so that you can then learn the surah and the du'a directly in Arabic. This will facilitate your journey in the future infinitely, and it will stop you from falling back into this kind of, it's kind of like a, a victim position where you're, you're not empowered to be able to read the script yourself. You're, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, I want you to not be in that position. Yeah, and without doing this, you, you can't learn Arabic, so you'll never understand the Qur'an when you listen to it and read it. Um, and in my opinion, in my humble opinion, and just logically, this is going to come before even learning to pray, right? So the next module, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share uh, something that you might not be expecting, which is... Maybe I should keep you in suspense. Yeah, no, I won't. So to, tomorrow we're going to learn about the essentials of religion. And to me, it's important that you learn to recite the Arabic script before learning the essentials of religion. So, for example, you ought to learn the words of prayer in Arabic using the Arabic script directly, not through a transliteration, even if you just became Muslim, all right? If you just became Muslim, you can go and do the congregational prayers, um, you know, and, and benefit and get the kind of spiritual feeling of being in, this, in the state and situation of prayer. Um, but when it comes to learning the words of prayer, I would recommend you learn the Arabic script first, because you know what? Everyone who wants to pray is very motivated to learn how to pray, right? So you can almost use that motivation, leverage that motivation to get yourself to learn the script so that you can learn the words of prayer uh, more easily um, by learning it through the Arabic script, not by using a transliteration, which is like, a, uh, I, if I could, I would obliterate all transliterations from the face of the earth. But that's just me. <laughs> and I'm not the only Arabic teacher who says this, by the way. Okay, use all the things you want to be able to do, like praying. You want to be able to pray. You want to be able to understand the Quran. You want to learn Arabic. Use the fact that you want to do all of those things as motivation to say, okay, well, first, I've got to nail the script. First, I've got to master the script. First, before I do any of that other stuff, before I learn, even learn how to pray, before I read the Quran, before I learn Arabic, before any of that, first things first, I've got to learn the script. So use all of that as motivation to learn the script so that you don't, fall into the trap of if you learn the words of prayer in transliteration, then guess what? You've, learned, you've lost your major motivation to learn the script. So now you could go years without learning the script, right? If you, uh, you read the Quran in English or you just listen to it and you never, you, you never learn the script, then it's like you can There are so many facilities out there like the English translation. There are even YouTube videos that shows the Arabic and then it shows the transliteration and then it shows the English, right? And it's like, yeah, okay, but then if you, you can... In fact, one of my, I was talking to a client the other day, and he was saying that he can listen to a reciter, read the transliteration, and recite all, like beautifully the way the reciter is translating, but he can't actually read the script. And I was like, no, 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 this is a disaster. We don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. We want to do the opposite. Humble ourselves to, to stop racing ahead in our Quran studies, bring ourselves back, and then master the script, because you only need to learn it one time. And you don't need to come back and learn it over and over again. This is the thing that you learn one time. It does take a little bit of time, but I'm going to show you how, to, how you can do it super fast in like a couple of weeks. And then you'll never, you'll never have this issue again. Here's another interesting thing. I learned the Arabic language without being super fluent at reading the Arabic script. Right? I wasn't super fluent. Right? I, uh, I had a Maldi Saab who tried to teach me, like a Maulana or a Imam, I guess, who tried to teach me when I was a kid, but I hated the classes. And that was when I was like maybe seven. And then I stopped, completely stopped my whole Islamic journey until I was a, in my late teens. And then I started getting into religion again. And then I was like, oh man, I, I don't even want to learn the script. I want to learn the Arabic language. And I took an Arabic language course. And in that course, I kind of had to reteach myself the Arabic script in order to learn the language. But the, the point I'm making here is I learned the Arabic language without being fluent in reading the script 
but I could just about decipher the letters and that's actually all you need to learn Quranic Arabic. If you can look at the letters and pronounce them, then you know enough, you're good enough at the script to immediately now start learning Quranic Arabic. The caveat is I would tell you to then learn Quranic Arabic without ever depending on a transliteration because some Arabic textbooks will still give you the transliteration. But if you're looking at the transliteration, you're, you're going to really, um, you're going to make life harder for yourself in the long run. So yeah, learn the script just good enough that you can read it and read a, a three letter word or a five letter word or whatever and pronounce it roughly correctly. And at that point, you're actually good enough to learn Quranic Arabic now. When you can read full words, then you learn Arabic. And pretty soon you'll recognize words. Here's the thing, when you, when you learn Arabic, at that point you'll start to recognize words because you'll be learning vocabulary lists. And when you recognize a word, it's like in English, you normally don't read the full word. Right. I just read this sentence. When you can read full words, then you learn Arabic. You'll soon recognize words which improve your fluency. You can read that sentence. But as you're reading it, you're probably not looking at every single letter in the word. Your eye automatically recognizes the whole word. Like when you saw the word Arabic, you knew it was Arabic without having to go Arabic. Ara you didn't have to read every letter. Why? Because your eye recognized the whole word. Right. So as you, when you learn to read the script, the next step is then learning uh, learning a few words of vocabulary so that you can read full words as you're reading the Quran or as you're reading any Arabic text. Um, we're going to do a couple of steps before that because there are other ways of improving your fluency at reading. Um, but one of the ways that improves your fluency of reading is actually just learning vocabulary. And look, the reward is immense. It's immense for learning the Arabic script. People skip it because they think it's not rewarding enough compared with other Quran activities, but you're looking super short term. Like, if I listen to the Quran and um, maybe even recite after a reciter, but I didn't learn the script, sure, in the short term, f f during that 30 minute session, that maybe was, uh, like, I don't know how you do a, a calculation of how rewarding something is, right? <laughs> in, in terms of eternal reward. But yeah, maybe I would get, in that 30 minutes, maybe I would get more reward for uh, listening and re repeating the Quran without, no, without reading the script, right? But in the long run, if I spent the same 30 minutes learning to read the 20, learning 28 bits of information is all we're talking about. We're talking about 28 bits of information. If I spent that 30 minute session learning those 28 bits of information and I spent maybe a couple of weeks working on it, that ends up being way more rewarding because you, for the rest of your life, are going to be, uh, because for the rest of your life, you're going to be reading the Quran and all of that reward is going to go back to that, that couple of weeks you spent learning to read the script. I think I've said this before already. Not mastering the script keeps you as a victim and you're never empowered to really seek knowledge or really delve into the Quran in more depth. You're dependent on other people to recite it to you and teach it to you. You're dependent on someone going through the hassle of writing out the Arabic in English for you, right? Uh, if I just gave you a dua and I gave you the Arabic and the English translation, that wouldn't be good enough. You'd need someone to turn the Arabic into a transliteration for you. It's like you're in a, a weakened position. You're in a, a, a disempowered position, but I want you to feel empowered as you go about your Quran study. And how are we going to do that? By following this module. Um, and again, without this, you're always going to be, you're going to feel or, or actually uh, be in a position of incompetent and being incapable just because you lack a skill. And that's all it is, is a skill. You can learn it in a week or two. Never read the trans... From this moment on, I want you to make the firm commitment. I'm never going to read the transliteration. I'm going to do this strategy instead. And then I'm going to do strategy number five, which will improve your fluency. But you're going to start just by doing this module. If you enjoyed this video and want the full Quran for Busy People system to transform your connection with the Quran in as little as 11 minutes a day, Go to QuranForBusyPeople.com and check out the free web class.